sorry, I got cut off there. Uh, so, um, syllogism has to do with deductive reasoning, where we take for granted certain premises and we draw out of those premises something which is necessarily true if those premises are true. Uh, induction is the um, conclusion of general truths on the basis of observed particular instances. What does Aristotle say about both those forms of reasoning is that they both make use of prior knowledge, certainly the premises uh, in the uh, syllogism are uh, supposedly prior knowledge, things we already know and on the basis of which we can be said to know new things. And uh, induction uh, takes for granted that we know the particular instances. That is, uh, if I say that all apples are red on the basis of induction, what I've, what I've presumed is that I know that this apple is red and that that apple is red. So I have to have prior knowledge in order to make my new conclusion, my new knowledge that all apples are red. Again, all apples are not red, but we're talking about the form of inquiry and the form of reasoning rather than the truth of it in a particular case. Um, so, uh, on the basis of that, right, we, he says that we have to have pre-existent knowledge. Uh, he says in the second paragraph that the pre-existent knowledge required is of two kinds. In some cases, admission of the fact must be assumed. In others, comprehension of the meaning of the term used, and sometimes both assumptions are essential. He goes on and says, thus we assume that every predicate can be either truly affirmed or truly denied of any subject and that triangle means so-and-so. So those are those, those last are, are examples of each uh, kind of pre-existent knowledge that he has said we have to have, or have to have either one or sometimes both. We either have to know the fact, or we have to know the meaning of a term. Uh, in his example of the fact is the fact that every predicate, that is, every um, thing that can be predicated, uh, every word used uh, to describe a thing can either be truly predicated of it or um, truly denied of something. That is, um, the moon is our subject and the predicate, let's say, uh, is square. Now, the idea is that uh, squareness can either be truly predicated, that is, the moon really is square, or it can be um, falsely predicated, um, but that one or the other in this case, falsely. So the idea is that we know that fact, that every, let's do it again, every predicate can be either truly affirmed or truly denied of any subject, that we, we recognize that fact to be true, and that's our pre-existing knowledge in that case. Or as example of the triangle, triangle means so and so, that is that in, in, this, in this case there's no fact to be recognized, rather the meaning of a word or meaning of a concept, not so the pre-existent knowledge isn't that this or that is so, but rather that uh, this is what a triangle is, that this is what the concept triangle means, whether it means the closed-sided rectilineal figure with three sides or a, a, a closed figure with uh, its interior angles equal to two right angles and so and so, that we know what the term means. Uh, so what has he said? That all as he said in the first paragraph, all teaching and learning, all instruction given or received proceeds from pre-existent knowledge, and that knowledge is either of a fact, that such and such is the case, or it's a knowledge of a meaning, that this is what a triangle means, this is what the word or concept triangle signifies. Now, at that point, <laughs> the second paragraph, I have to say, gets a little obscure for me, but let me do my best to try to give my version of, of what's going on there. Um, and again, he's working with this distinction between knowledge of the fact and knowledge of, uh, of the meaning. It says, recognition of a truth may in some cases contain as factors both previous knowledge and also knowledge acquired simultaneously with that recognition knowledge. This latter of the particulars actually falling under the universal and therein already virtually known. For example, the student knew beforehand that the angles of every triangle are equal to two right angles. That, that is, that's knowledge of the meaning or knowledge of the universal, knowledge of what triangle in general is. 
But it was only at the actual moment at which he was being led on to recognize this as true in the instance before him that he